All right, so for doors, there's about a bazillion ways to do doors, and everybody's got a different opinion about how to do them. But mostly what it is is um, what, what you would like your door to do, essentially. Which direction would you like to open? How would you like it to look? Is it important that players see it open and close? Things like that. So as you, I'm going to go over a uh, one or two, maybe maybe two. I'm just going to go over one right now. But uh, door types, and uh, as you get better at mapping, then you'll you'll learn more. So you'll I trust you will learn more door types. It's not difficult. They're all related. Um, so let's get started. So instead of just this opening right here, I want to make a door, and specifically I want to make a door that slides open and shut. When players approach it, uh, like an automatic door, and I want to restrict the door opening and closing since this is a spawn to just the spawn, uh, the team that's spawning in here. Otherwise, that'd be pretty unfair if you could get in there and lay sticky bombs all over the place. Not saying I would do that or anything. Okay, so let's make a door. Select Prop Dynamic in your entities. Go find it and uh, put one on the ground. And by the way, if you're wondering what I'm doing, how I'm just zooming over to the properties, I'm clicking, I'm uh, holding Alt and hitting Enter on my keyboard. And that just pulls up the um, properties menu really quickly. So let's go to world model and let's say uh, type in, I don't know, slide. I think it's under door. Let's find a door. So there's the grates, and here's some doors. Find this door right here. Props, gameplay, door slide large dynamic.mdl. Double click. Let's give it a name. Let's say uh, red spawn door prop. Um, let's disable the shadows. It's a good idea to disable um, shadows on moving or um, on dynamic props because it, it cuts down on uh, processing time and um, yeah leave the collisions alone I'm trying to see what else we can do okay well this is fine if, if things need to change we can change it click apply if you haven't already done that now we've got our door here let's move that up a little bit rotate it also, uh, you can right-click and then um, transform is what I'm doing, or control M to pull up the transformation box here. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, make it sure it's facing outwards. I'm going to stick it in the wall here. And I'm probably going to have to make this opening a little bigger so that I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to take this uh, wall and cut that. Okay, and I'm going to move this piece of wall up and these pieces of wall up. Okay, I'm going to make the windows a little bigger while we're doing this. Again, it's up to you. It's your map. Be free. Okay, so there's our door. And just like our um, our uh, resupply locker, it doesn't actually do anything yet, other than sit there and wait for things to happen. For now. Okay, so here's our prop. We're going to make a uh, an actual door. Mm, type in something like metal. And uh, filter. Let's see here. Metal beam. That's fine. So make a small brush where that prop is. Make sure it's uh, not going into the walls. There we go. Enter. And so that will be our actual door. It's the one thing that um, the trigger will talk to when people interact with the trigger and, and it will tell it to open and close. This will have to be changed. Right now it's just a brush, just like our old uh, trigger was over here before we tied it to an entity. So we're going to tie this to an entity also. 
So right click, tie to entity, except this time instead of func um, regenerate, we're going to do func door. Apply. We're going to give it a name. Let's say red uh, or red spawn door instead of red spawn door prop. Go down to render mode and say don't render. We actually don't want to show the door, we want to show the prop that represents the door. Uh, again, if you're going to do this without a prop, then you do want the door rendered, otherwise it's just going to be a, uh, a, a see-through door essentially. So to say don't render, that means we're not actually going to draw the door in there. Uh, disable receiving shadows and disable shadows that it, it casts itself. Now, you'll also want to maybe change the speed of the door. I'm going to change mine up to uh, 400, I guess. Delay before reset is the amount of time in seconds after the door is open before it closes. Usually in Team Fortress 2 maps, you don't want to have a delay before reset. But, again, it's whatever um, the map calls for, essentially. I'm going to set it to negative 1 so it stays where it is until it receives the instruction to close or open. I'm going to specifically tell the door that it needs to close when players are not um, nearby the door and for it to open when players are nearby the door. Now the lip is the amount of engines of blah blah blah. I don't know exactly what this is, but most um, valve maps for some reason have the lip set at 4. Not sure why um, and I might look that up, but I'm just going to follow what I've been doing for a long time. Call me blind. Well, whatever. And finally, the move direction. Where is this door actually going to move? Um, usually, it's going to move up because that's the way the prop um, is going to look like it's moving. Uh, but if you're making one of those uh, uh, round timer um, those gates at the beginning of a Team Fortress 2 round, if, you're, if you know what I'm talking about, then some of them move up, some of them move down, some of them move from side to side. Um, these are, this is how you change that using the move direction. And it's got built-in values for up and down. So I'm just going to use up, uh, make sure everything else is fine, hit flags, and disable touch opens. Now that's um, that means if you just touch that um, uh, door, then the door will magically open up, and we don't want that. We want to explicitly tell the door when it's supposed to open and when it's supposed to close. And I think that's all of it. Um, we could very easily be making a mistake here, but I'm going to trust that that's okay. Hit apply for everything, and get out of there. Now the last thing you're going to need is a trigger. So go under your textures again, select trigger, and make a nice big trigger that um, will cover both the outside and the inside of the door, and hit enter. There's our trigger. Tie to entity, and call this funk or call this trigger multiple. And 